So here we are at Amsterdam Central Station, just about to board the 917 Thales service to Brussels. I've arrived here in Brussels and I've just seen a huge convoy of police motorbikes and black cars go by which I think is the European summit arriving to discuss the Brexit crisis. So that was interesting and now I'm just walking on my way to see some of the Bronte sites that are associated with Brussels. So that church that you have just heard chiming behind me is the church of St. Michael and Gadula. Now you have to excuse my non-existent French pronunciation here, but I think that's right. And this is the first place I'm coming to today on my tour of Brussels. Now before I talk a little bit more about this church, I just want to say why I've come to Brussels. Now as I mentioned in one of my previous videos, Charlotte Bronte came to Brussels with her sister Emily in 1842. It was their intention to start a school and to add finesse to their project, it was vital they learned some more European languages. So Charlotte and Emily came to Brussels to learn French and later German. The reason I have come to this particular church is that it is the very church that Charlotte came to to make her confession after she had fallen in love with her professor, Professor Aguerre at the Pensionat. And it is also the church that is mentioned in Charlotte Bronte's novel, Villette, when she does exactly the same thing and is a Protestant entering into a Catholic church to make her confession. So, I will now head into the church and show you some videos of what it looks like inside. For the next part of my tour of Brussels, I've come here to the Brussels Central Park, which is featured in Villette twice. Firstly, when Lucy Snow first arrives here in Brussels, or Villette as Charlotte Bronte calls it in that novel. And it is also mentioned further on in the novel when Lucy takes an opiate, which rather than sedating her, has the opposite effect and she arrives here at carnival time and finds herself in a sort of wild, drugged fantasy. I've got here the part of the let where she first describes this very park. Your shortest way will be to follow the boulevard and cross the park, he continued, but it is too late and too dark for a woman to go through the park alone. I will step with you thus far. He moved on and I followed him through the darkness and the small, soaking rain. The boulevard was all deserted, its path miry, the water dripping from its trees. The park was as black as midnight. In the double gloom of trees and fog I could not see my guide. I could only follow his tread. Not the least fear had I. I believe I would have followed that frank tread through continual night the world's end. Whilst it is hard to imagine on a bright sunny day like this with lovely clear weather, you do get from that passage a sense of the mood and foreboding that Lucy Snow experienced on her first arrival into Brussels. 
The park features again at another key scene in the novel, in chapter 38, when Lucy finds herself at what she describes as a small round kiosk with a large crowd standing watching some musicians play. And I've got this kiosk right behind me here. And as you can hear, there is indeed a musician playing. I'm now standing in front of the statue of General Belliard, which Charlotte Bronte mentions in Chapter 7 of her novel, The Professor. Crimsworth pauses here a while before proceeding on to descend these very steps. Unfortunately, this area has been completely remodelled since Charlotte Bronte's time here, so it would be unrecognisable to her today. Even this staircase, which is mentioned in the novel, has been redesigned from a single flight of stairs to this double flight that we see today. Although, unfortunately, the right-hand side is currently closed off to maintenance. Descending further down the stairs, we enter into what was in Charlotte Bronte's time here, the Rue de Isabel, although again this is now sadly gone, and I believe it is now buried underground, and that if you access one of the museums here, you can still see what is left of it. The Rue d'Isabelle is a significant place as it was the location of the Pensionnat Beguerre with its famous garden that the Brontes stayed at during their time in Brussels. This street, or what's left of it, was also likely the location of the Pensionnats in Charlotte Bronte's novel Villette, where Lucy Snow stays during her time in Brussels. To prove I'm not just showing you any random street in Brussels, there is this plaque that is now the only sign of the Bronte's existence in this particular quarter. A few short steps from the Rue d'Isabelle, we find the Rue Tarakan, and again you'll have to excuse my appalling pronunciation, and unlike the Rue d'Isabelle, this particular street is original and survived the remodelling of the early part of the 20th century that destroyed the Bronte's former street. This gives a real flavour of just how subterranean this particular part of the town is. As you can see, the main road is now up there, which is of course why the route is about buried underground. And if you look over here, you'll find another plaque commemorating the Bronte's time here at the Pensionnat Aguerre, where it stayed from 1842 to 3. And of course, Charlotte Bronte returned on her own and I believe left in 1844. I'm going to finish my tour here in front of the Chapel Royale in Brussels. I began my tour by looking at the church where Charlotte went when in her time of deepest desperation she went to confession with a Catholic priest but of course, as we well know, the Brontes were not themselves Catholics and in fact, Charlotte especially hated the Catholic religion. Therefore, for their devotions, they came here to the Protestant Chapel Royale. You can see just over here a sign marking the spot. I hope you have enjoyed my brief tour of the Brontes Brussels and whilst we typically think of Haworth as the Brontes location it is important to remember the impact that this city had on particularly Charlotte's writing with two out of four of her novels being based here. I would also like to end by thanking Charlotte Matheson for her fantastic blog online from 2014 which provided a really helpful way of finding all these Bronte sites here in Brussels. So thank you to her and thank you all for watching.